playing for me. I just want you to close your eyes, please, where you are. I just want you to, in your own words, friends, there's no way that we can speak to God. There's no right or wrong way to speak to God. But in your own way, I want to ask you just to, just to tell Him that maybe the reason that you are here this morning, it's because, it's because of Him. Surely it's not because of you, it's because of Him. So in your own words, don't you just want to speak to the Lord? Just say to Him, God, I'm here this morning because of you. God, I'm here this morning because my heart cries for you. God, I'm here this morning because I just love you. God, you love me, but I also love you. And God, this morning I'm here. So come on, friends, in your own words, I want you to just softly, just so that you can hear yourself, just close your eyes and just say, here is here for you. Lord, I'm here this morning because of you. God, I love you. God, you love me. God, you're a good God. And I want to appreciate that. Just, just for a minute, just for a minute, let's just do that. Say, God, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to be here this morning. God, I could have been at so many different places, but I'm here this morning. And it's because of your goodness. God, it's because of your goodness. It's because of your goodness that I'm here this morning. Oh, it's not about me. It's about you. It's not about me. It's about you. God, I just love you. We just love you and we just appreciate you so much this morning. We appreciate you so much this morning. God, when everything is stripped, when we have nothing, we always have you. We so easily look and we are so easily allowing ourselves to be judged by how people see us and what people think. What we have and what we do not have. That is not how you look. You don't look on the outside, you look at the heart, Father. You look at our hearts, Lord God. And it's my prayer this morning that you will look into our hearts, that you will speak to every heart here this morning in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, speak to our hearts. In the name of Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Thank you. You can take your seats. Uh, friends, just a quick introduction. For those of you who do not know me and you don't know my wife, I see a lot of uh, 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 friendly and new faces this morning. Tomorrow, the 14th, will mark exactly two months that we have moved here from Germiston. Um, it's, a, it's a long story, uh, but I want to start this, this morning. And, and I just need to give recognition to um, Dries, um, um, Fonny, Jan, who is not here, Brit, Giel, Jonathan, Hans, Yuri, Cliff, and Peter. Thank you. But you know what? When, when God is in something, it's just uh, it's sometimes overwhelming. And to all of you that we've connected with and that we had the privilege to, to meet and things like that, thank you for your open hearts and your, your open arms. Uh, we really appreciate that so much. I always say to people, when they speak to us, they ask, they ask us, so who's it in Creel? How's it in Creel? <laughs> and uh, my response is, um, it's very liberating, um, and maybe that's why I'm so overwhelmed this morning. So just on behalf of my wife and myself, thank you very much. Um, now we have an op I have a privilege this morning to be on this pulpit and to share a message with you. Um, friends, it's always an, it's, it's an honor. It's never something to be taken lightly, and I appreciate you just also um, um, receiving the word this morning. So my wife and I, we've known... Andres and Sonia for 25 years. Um, 
he used to, together with Jonathan, they used to come to the church where we served up in Germiston on a Monday evening. We had a Bible school. I was the principal of that Bible school. And every Monday night, Jonathan and Pastor Andres would travel there. They will come and minister, and they will come back. And then they will go there next Monday, and then they will come back. And as the principal of the Bible school back then, we just connected, and, uh, and it was something really special. And that's where our friendship and our journey started. Our paths then separated for a quite a significant number of years, and it was just amazing how God brought us back together. So we served in a church in Germison for 33 years. We were there when it was a small group. Uh, we helped build and establish something wonderful there. And when the senior pastor passed away, um, Ach, we just felt uh, we, we, we contributed what we had to contribute. He, the, the pastor there passed away, and shortly after, his wife. And we just realized um, the, time was, the time was over. And it was just amazing how God just connected us again, myself and, and, and Pastor Andres. And it was just amazing. And now with you wonderful people. So we came up here with a desire in our hearts to, to build and to contribute to what it is God wants to do here in Pumalonga, not just in Creel, not just in Folksters, not just in Bethel, but wherever God wants to take us. So it's a privilege for us. Thank you again. Thank you again for your hearts. Thank you again for, for wel welcoming us. Uh, for 25 of those 33 years, I've been in full-time ministry. I was 20 years old when I was called into the ministry and it was such a privilege. And of 23 of those 25 years, my beautiful wife has been serving with me and uh, yeah, we're just looking forward to journey with you. So thank you again. Uh, before I start this morning with my message, this is something I want to share with you. Um, um, and maybe this is something that you know. But friends, there's something about God that I have come to learn and that I've come to know. And it's not just with God, but it's with our walk that we must never take for granted what we have. And we must never take for granted the fact that, that God loves us. And there could be two groups of people I'm speaking to this morning. There could be some of us that know God. Because remember, it's not just us in this auditorium here this morning. There's also people at home who, when I look into that camera, I speak to you, friend, who is uh, joining us and, and, and who is with us and getting this message but there's people who know God and who has experienced his love, but then there are some who has never experienced his love. And there are some who struggle experiencing the love of the Father. But I want to share something with you this morning that we must never take for granted, and I want to start this way. Now, I heard a bit of a story, and I'm not sure how, how true this is, but please allow me to share this. Abraham, one day, he's in heaven and he feels like a game of golf. And he goes to Jesus, he says, Jesus, come on, man, we, we, we must go and play some golf. And uh, Jesus says, it's a very good idea, and they invite Moses to join, and they also in invite this fourth guy to go and play some golf. So if you know golf, they're on the first tee, and Abraham takes his shot, yes, and he's straight down the fairway, and it looks, and he's quite excited, he says, that's no, a good shot. And then Jesus hits the ball, and it's a very good shot as well. And uh, Moses hits, and it's a very good shot. And the fourth guy also hits, and it's a wonderful shot that they hit down this fairway. And now they come to the ball. Now they're going to hit their second shots. The second shot is going to be a shot to go to the green where they have to put the ball into the hole. And Abram hits this ball, yes, and it's a couple of meters on the green, a couple of meters from the hole, and he thinks, yo, vandaag is my dag. Today is my day. I am going to smack these guys, I'm going to show them today. Jesus eats the ball and the ball goes all skiff and there's some water around the green and his ball falls in the water. Actually, there's a little island in the water and his ball jumps or falls on the island that's in this small little dam. Moses eats the ball and he goes directly into the water. I don't know how true the story is, but apparently it, okay. So it went into the water. And this fourth guy also hits and it goes into the water. Now they come to their second shot. Oh, Jesus says, this is no problem. Um, now remember, Abram is on the green, eh? he's very excited. They get on to, Jesus says, well, this is no problem. Jesus walks on the water to the little island where his ball is. 
He gets to his ball, he plays his second shot, a couple of meters from the hole. Abram starts getting nervous. He thinks, oh my goodness. Moses, his ball is almost in the water. He says, oh, no problem. He takes out his club, hits the water, the water opens. He walks, <laughs> he walks to his ball on dry ground, on the green couple of meters. And now there's this fourth guy, and his ball is also almost in the water. He hits the club, the water opens. He first takes a couple of steps on the water. He hits, the water opens. He hits the ball, but he duffs it. He doesn't play a good shot. And it just goes a couple of meters in the water again. But just as the other three wants to get excited, here comes a little frog. Jumps out of the water with a ball in his mouth. And as this frog sits there, here comes a bird. He picks up that frog, and now there they fly. And as they fly over the green, the frog drops the ball. On the green, here goes the ball. Ching, 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 in the hole. Abram turns to Jesus. It's not fun playing with your dad. <laughs> now, I don't want to... I'm not a joking, I'm not a joke-telling person. I'm not trying to be funny and disrespect the pulpit, but there's a reason for this. I think if God were to play golf, I don't think he did. I don't think they play golf in heaven, so let me just get that right now. But one thing I know about God is he's always good. And even if he had to play golf, I think he would have been good at golf as well. Friends, in this church, and this ministry has a message that God is good. This, this ministry has a message that God loves us. Do you know the Bible says in Revelation 4 verse 8, and I haven't started my message yet, I just, wanna, I just want you to get to know me, but I just want to share something. But in Revelation 4 verse 8, it says there are angels, the Bible calls them beasts, but it's not ugly beasts, it's wonderful creatures. Revelation says, day and night, they're around the throne of God, and what do they do? Do you know? What, do you know what they do? They do this. Day and night, they cry, holy, holy, holy. And I'm thinking to myself, now, if you, me, this morning, thank you for the praise and worship, but Ayanda, if you guys were going to put one song on there and sing that one song the whole morning, now, sometimes God can anoint a song, and we sing it two or three times. But, Umdris, if we were going to sing one song the whole morning, Yes, I think it can become very boring. Don't you agree? If we were going to sing one song this whole morning and next week, Shulin, the same song, the whole of this morning and next week, yellow song. Yes, I think it's going to be very boring. If you sing the whole song for the week, for the month, for the year, constantly, day and night, yes, it can become very boring. So in my mind, if I read the scripture, I, they say, angels around the throne, day and night, cry holy, holy, holy. I'm thinking, yeah, isn't that boring? Now some of you are shaking your head. No, Yaku, you don't understand. It can't be boring. Cause the, I mean, and I agree. But I want to just say, share something with you. Now, it's not my message yet. I'm going to get to my message now. But I just want to share this with you. I think God is like this. God is so good, God is so awesome, God is so great, that every now and then, He reveals something of Himself. And the angels and the elders who's around the throne say, I didn't know you can do that. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. And then God reveals something else again. And they say, Jesus. Wow. Holy. Holy. I think God is so awesome that every now and then he just reveals something. The Bible says in Revelation 7 that they were one day in heaven and they appeared a crowd of witnesses. And they said, who's these people? And they said, they are born again because of Jesus. And the Bible says, angels and the elders wrote a new song and started singing. Wow. So this is what I just want to tell you this morning. Please don't forget. Never take for granted when we come together, when you listen to a message. Because you might not remember everything, but there's always something that God just wants to show you. 
that will cause you to say, wow, yes, awesome. Okay? But friends, that's for free. God is good. God is good. God is awesome. God is loving. And this brings me to my message this morning. I'm not going to be long. But I want to share something this morning. God wants us to run to him, never from him. I want you, if you have your Bible, to please open it. In John 8, verse 1 to 11. John 8, 1 to 11. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again to the temple, and all the people came to him and sat there with him, and he taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. She committed adultery, and we caught her in the act. Now they bring this poor woman to Jesus. Now Moses in the law commands that such a woman should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and he wrote with his finger in the ground. When they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and he said to them, He that is without sin, cast the first stone to her. So you want to stone this woman. If you are without sin, throw the first stone. And they which heard it, were convicted by their own conscience, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. And Jesus lifted up himself, and he saw none but this woman. And he said to her, Woman, where are those that accused you? Hath no, has no man condemned you? And she said, Lord, there's no man. Everyone has left. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. I don't want to speak about sin. But I want to ask you this morning, if there are any among you who do not miss the mark every now and then, you don't disobey, you never disobey, I want to ask you to fly around the room, please, because then you are superman and superwoman. <laughs> I want to encourage you, last week, one of our elders, Jan, he ministered and he and he had, he had a wonderful message about how the relationship with the Father, everything that we do flows from there. And in a, at that moment, he mentioned something about um, us missing the mark. Sometimes we just disobey. We do something that is not right. Okay? And he explained it so very nicely that there's consequences for that disobedience. But God never leaves you. God is always there. So go and listen. It's, it's on YouTube. You can go and see, listen to that for yourself. It was wonderful. But friends, this is what I want to speak to you this morning. Because, and again, I say to you, it might not be for everyone this morning, but I have a specific message in my heart that there can be people this morning, not just in this auditorium, but also at home, that you have missed the mark. You have done, maybe you are, in, you are just, you've disobeyed. And what happens, friends, when we disobey? And this is sometimes, and this is what I want to get to this morning. There are, there, there's a message like this woman. She almost deserved to be stoned. Because the law requires that she had to be stoned. Because she missed it. Because she disobeyed. Because she did something wrong. What she deserved was to be stoned. And everyone was expecting her to be stoned. She was going to be killed. I want to ask you, what do you think that woman was thinking that morning? I think she knew. She was expecting. Here, let's just be quick and get this over with. I don't think she had any hope because she was taught and trained that, yes, I am going to get it today. But then Jesus says, if any one of you are, think that you are perfect, you've missed it, throw the first stone and no one could do that. There's a message. This is what I want to share with you this morning. Sometimes we miss it. And it's okay to miss it. 
But when we miss it, okay, it's never okay to miss it. But when we miss it, church, listen to me. When we make that mistake, when we sometimes disobey, we have been taught and we have been trained that there must come a punishment. God is going to sort this thing out. How dare you miss it? How dare you disobey God? And now you must understand, you are in trouble. And whether you think or whether you believe it is God or the devil doing it, but God allowing him to do it, I want to say to you this morning, God does not condemn you. This woman, they wanted to condemn her. They wanted to stone her. They wanted to kill her. But Jesus said, no, I don't condemn her. I'm not going to do that. No one's going to do this. Friends, there's something that we need to understand this morning that we sometimes miss it. We don't want to, but we do. But when we miss it, don't allow yourself to be condemned. Don't allow yourself to be judged. Don't allow yourself to be ashamed and to feel guilty and say, oh my goodness, God is now so angry with me and so upset with me. I, 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 I can't even speak to him. I feel so bad. How can I not talk to God about this thing? Or what can I do? You see, sometimes that, that guilt, that shame, that, that condemnation wants to cause you to run away from God because you feel, yo, I'm not worthy. I spoke to you earlier, I said to you that I think around heaven they say, holy, holy, because he is so holy, he is so wonderful. But church, he is this holy God, but he's still a loving God. And I want to say to you this morning that nowhere in the Bible can you show me, and if you can, please come and do, because I haven't discovered this, but I cannot find a scripture that if you are in Christ, that you are still guilty. I cannot find a scripture that says if you are in Christ that God is condemning you and he doesn't want to speak to you. I cannot find a scripture in the Bible that says if you, if you miss it, if you disobey, God withdraws and he leaves you over to whatever. It's not there. We've been taught that way in the Old Testament. We've been taught that way under the law. We've been taught that way. We've been raised that way. But I want to say to you this morning, we miss it. There's some people here this morning, there's some people at home that we miss it. You haven't just maybe missed it once. Maybe you miss it all the time. Maybe you're struggling with something. Maybe there's something in your heart that is, that is just eating you up. And it's making you feel so guilty and so ashamed that you almost want to run away from God because you feel that condemnation. You feel that judgment. You feel that bad. Church, that is not God. It is not. It is not. It's not. It's not. There was a boy one day at the bus stop. I heard this just recently. A young boy was standing at the bus stop. And an elderly gent, or he, excuse me, he wasn't at the bus stop. He was standing two blocks away from a bus stop. And an elderly gentleman, but then he's just standing there early in the morning. And an elderly gentleman comes along and says to him, boy, why are you standing here? And he says, I'm standing here because uh, I'm waiting for the bus. The elderly gentleman says to him, but boy, the bus stop is two blocks down. You're standing at the wrong place. I'm also getting on the bus, so I know. It's a true story. The, son, the boy says to him, no, the bus will pick me up here. He says, son, um, you're at the wrong place. You're not supposed to be where you are. You're out of the rules. The bus picks you up at the bus stop. That's the rule. That's how it works. You can't be standing somewhere else and expect the bus to pick you up here. You see, sometimes we're out of the rules. He says, Oom, Uncle, the bus will pick me up. <laughs> the elderly gentleman keeps on walking his way, and as he goes a couple of meters, he thinks, yes, I can't let this boy stand here. And he turns around, and he stands there with the boy, and he thinks, let me just stand with this boy just to help him. Something should go wrong. A couple of minutes later, here comes the bus, and the bus stops. Door opens. Come in, come in. And 
and both of them you get inside, and as they get into the bus, you know you find the driver there. And the uncle says to the boy, boy, I don't understand, how, are you, how did you get this bus to stop here? And the boy replied, the bus driver is my dad. <laughs> True story. When you sometimes feel isolated, when you sometimes feel alone, when you sometimes feel rejected, when you sometimes feel ashamed, when you sometimes feel guilty, you feel that way, but it's not God causing you to feel that way. He's the bus driver. He is there, even if you moved outside of the boundary that you think should be the boundary. God is the bus driver who will meet you where you are at to say to you, get onto the bus. I'm not condemning you, get onto the bus. Now friends, this morning I'm not, I'm not condoning. I'm not saying it's okay to sin or to walk in disobedience and it's just a ride. You can carry on and just do what you want. I'm not saying that, please. Don't, don't take it out of context. What I am saying is, there are therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. One, that's Romans 8 verse 1. 1 John 3 verse 20 says, I want to read this to you. If you want to go there, you can, but I want to read this to you. Please, I have a message this morning. I just want you to bear with me because it's going to encourage you. I know it. 1 John 3 verse 20 says, For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart. And He knows all things. Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, we have confidence towards God. That word heart speaks of cardia, feelings, thoughts. If your thoughts, if your feelings condemn you, God does not condemn you. We miss the mark. We sometimes move away. There are people who have never been close even. But sometimes we move away. We feel alone. We feel like that boy standing at the bus stop. But we don't know daddy's coming. You sit here this morning. You sit at home and you feel ashamed and guilty. I want to tell you it's not God. Sometimes it's your heart. It's your feelings. It's your thoughts. The way you have been taught, the way you have been trained is making you feel guilty. Is making you feel ashamed. Is making you think that I am just going to run away from God. I can't run to Him because if I run to Him, He's this God who has a sham buck in His hands. And he, He's just sitting there in heaven. Because He's this righteous judge that will judge everything we do. And boy, oh boy, if you just miss the mark, oh, tchoof, smacks you and then you say oh sorry 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 pa sorry 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 dad and then everything is okay and then one day you just miss it again you never want to but you miss it he hits you again and he smacks you and you think oh 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 this is what we believe but it's wrong belief the bible says it's our thoughts it's our feelings it's our heart our heart condemns us and then there's a second thing that condemns us. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 3 verse 16. 1 Timothy 3 verse 16. Just make sure. 3 verse 6, apologies. And he's speaking, it's in context concerning people who work in the ministry and what people should do, but this is how it works. It's a principle. You should not be a novice lest being lifted up with pride and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Friends, I'm not here to preach about the devil because he's defeated, he's outranked, he's outclassed, he was outsmarted, he's, he's been stripped of everything. But friends, if we allow him, family, if we allow him to condemn us, to bring a condemnation, to bring a guilt, to bring a shame, if he allows us to bring that, we will feel, we will think that God is unhappy. God is there. Yeah, yeah, like you will most. Yeah. And then something bad happens. 
Ja. That is not God. Some of you are sitting and saying, yeah, you don't know the Bible. I know the Bible very well, thank you very much. And please, friends, God loves, God is in the forgiving business, God is in the restoration business, God is in the building business, God does not break, God does not destroy, God, can he do that for sure? Not a doubt. Is there consequences for sin? Definitely, there's consequences. But it's not his doing. Jan last week explained, he says, we missed the mark, we disobey. There's consequences. Listen, man, when my boys were young, I've got two very handsome boys. Very handsome. They're not spoken for, so if you have someone that you think is a nice fit, they're not available, please. I don't know you yet. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I have two very handsome boys, Zayn and Dian, they're 18 and 19 years old. When they were young, Ron, you would say to them, now you're teaching them what to take, where not to touch, leave the TV, leave there, don't pull there, don't do this. Okay. Zayn, you don't do that. Don't go there, don't touch that TV. Okay. Don't touch that TV. But he disobeys. He touches the TV. We pull something he's not supposed to pull and maybe something falls and something breaks or whatever. Does it happen? If he pulls something and there was a glass and the glass falls and breaks, tell me, can I fix the glass? The damage is done. There's a consequence. But was I sitting there, Zane, don't pull that. The glass is going to break. The glass is going to fall. It's going to break. Zane, don't do it. Zane, don't do it. Go, go, go. I want to smack you. Go, I want to smack him. You understand? It's, it's mad. It's mad to encourage your child not to do something, but then hope that he would do it so that you can smack him. It's mad. But that's how we think God does it. Obey me. Obey me because I love you. Don't do that. Stay with me because I love you. But boy, I can't wait until you miss it. Because if you miss it, and God's got a long shambok. It reaches not just to the front seat, it reaches even to the guys at the back. It doesn't make sense. Let me tell you why I think the devil is referred to as a snake. No snakes. Go sis, sis. That snake, when we miss it, he comes every now and then he says, Sis, sis, suffering silence. Sis, sis, man, um, dries, man. Sis, man, Brits. Sis, man, Jono. Why did you miss disobey? Why did you miss it? Sis, man, sis, suffering silence. God is angry. God is upset. Suffer in silence. Sis. Sis. This is not in the Bible. So don't say Yaku's got a wrong theology. I'm just trying to make it practical to you so that you can understand how things sometimes work. God is not the one who accuses you. God is not the one who brings the guilt. God is not the one who brings the shame. God is not the one who brings the condemnation. It's not God. It's not from him. It's either your own thoughts, your heart, your, 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 way of, your old way of thinking, the old man, or it's the devil bringing that. It's not God. So why run away from him? Why feel, you can sit in the church and you can feel, I'm here, because yes, I just hope there's hope for me. But you almost feel, you don't have confidence to speak to him and to approach him because of that guilt. That thing that's here, that's, that's hammering you. And we think, how can I speak to God? We run from him instead of to him. Instead of being here in the morning and saying, <laughs> wow, I don't deserve this. I've missed it. 
But in you, in Christ, I have forgiveness and acceptance and love. I have it. I don't have to fight for it. I don't have to deserve it. I love my boys. If they disobey me or not. If they walk according to how I guided them or not. I love them. Were there consequences? Yes, but I was always there. There's consequences, but God is always there. But we tend to believe that He's not. We tend to feel isolated and we suffer in silence. Don't suffer in silence. There were many years in my life I suffered in silence because I didn't know. I didn't know. I was missing the mark. I wasn't walking in obedience to God. I wasn't on a trip and doing things, but I wasn't in obedience. I wasn't doing what I knew God expected me to do. And I was suffering in silence. I was in bed for six months. I couldn't get out. And the worst thing was there was no one there to try and get me out. My wife even couldn't get me out. She just prayed and said, oh God, you need to get him out. Stop the business of belief here. Meet Yaku where he's waiting. He's not at the bus stop right now. He's outside of the rules. He's not where he's supposed to be. But please, you're a good bus driver. You're a great golfer. You're a great, <laughs> you're a great bus driver. You're a great and good God. Please meet him where he's at. But I couldn't get... Him. I didn't see the bus was coming and then it would go and coming and go and coming and go and I couldn't accept it because in my mind I felt so guilty I felt so ashamed I felt so condemned I'm ending with this this morning friends in 1 Samuel 17 David is ready to go up to Goliath now that Goliath is standing there. He's three meters, 3.3 meters tall. That's a long word. He's serious. His spear alone weighs seven kilograms. It's a serious dude. And for a month, two months, he's been standing there saying to the people of Israel, come on, who will fight me? And he's this giant. He's intimidating he shouts with a loud voice and the people are too afraid. I wonder why, but that's a discussion for another time. David comes to him. He says, who do you think you are? Coming to me with sticks and stones. Who do you think you are? You, a young boy. And he's intimidating and he's loud. No, sorry, I'm loud because there's a reason. Because I, I, I'm not sounding, sorry, bro. Uh, I'm, I'm not sounding like Goliath, but it was something like that. Ah! And David, David wasn't suffering in silence. David had no condemnation issues. David had no guilt or shame issues. He went... The same God who delivered me from the bear and the lion will deliver me from you, you filthy thing. But this giant was shouting. Ah! And sometimes that guilt and that shame is shouting at you. Ah! How can you speak to the Lord? How do you deserve this? How do you? Who do you think you are? You disobey, man. You miss God all the time. You in sin. Who do you think you are? And it's intimidating. Ah. But then there's this, that still small voice that says, I'm your dad, man. I've got you. I've helped you with the lion. I've helped you with the bear. Don't worry about this. But it's me worrying. John, I'm not worrying. Gareth, I'm not worrying. Don't worry. I've got you. I know where you are. I've got you. I've got your back. But this morning, there are some of us, let me, before I go there, and that young David heard that voice. And the Bible says, now this is just me, my interpretation. I'm seeing the picture. He got so excited. The Bible, the Bible says he ran towards Goliath. He didn't walk there. <laughs> Flip it. 
Oh, yes, he knows. This guy's big. Oh, yes. Oh. Hey, man. I've only got a stone. He went there. He ran. And he slayed that giant. This morning, not all of us, but there are some of us. There's people at home that are suffering in silence. You've missed it. And it's not okay. It's not okay. But you have. You disobey, or you have disobeyed. It's not okay, but you have. But you feel, I must run away from him. I don't deserve to, to go to him. And if I go to him, I'm going to be in trouble. Yes, he's going to smack me. He's going to give me hiding. I'm going to, oh goodness, I feel so bad. There's a still small voice that this morning wants to shout at you. And tell you that he loves you. He accepts you. He does not condemn you. He does not. He's on the bus. And he's asking us, I've stopped. I'm there with you. Get onto the bus. And let's continue our journey. Friends, each one of us in this place, the people back home, we've got a wonderful future. Wonderful. Wonderful. Get onto the bus. Don't run from him. Run to him. His arms, his heart is open. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you this morning that he is right there with you. He's not the one that's smacking you. He's not. Move on. Accept his love this morning. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes as I pray for us this morning. Uh, Father, just as we sang this morning, um, we are just stripped. We can do nothing to deserve your love, to deserve your acceptance, to deserve your forgiveness. And if there's anyone here this morning, God, anyone at home that has any guilt, Or any shame. In the name of Jesus. By the work of Jesus. God you have set them free. God you have set them free. In Jesus name. Whosoever believe in Jesus. Shall never be ashamed. Whoever believes in you. Shall not be ashamed. That is what your word says, and that is what I released this morning. Give us confidence to run to you, never away from you. Amen. Amen.